Adversity, bring it. The struggle, we welcome it. Snooze on life, never that. We are Dave Regina and Mike Perella, and this is the No Snooze Podcast. Come on. Welcome back, No Snooze Podcast, episode 152. As always, I'm in the booth with the big three. Michael, the show, Pirelli. Claudio, the voice, Valenzuela. The hat looks fire, by the way, CV. And I am Dave, the body, a.k.a. the lake body, Regina. Michael, how the hell are you, my brother? Not as good as you, apparently. <laughs> no, no, Living no. life on the lake. No, yeah, listen, man, that lake life is the best life. Another week has gone by. Uh, probably another four days on the lake, probably another four steaks in the body. Lakes and steaks, baby. I wonder how many cigars are oh, smoked stogies. because of your post. Because I have to say, <laughs> you remind me, treat yourself, have a nice cigar. So uh, I don't know what day it was. One day I was sitting out on my patio, Hobart West, and West I had side. a nice stogie. And I'm like, thank you, Dave. Yep. Yeah, man. I, I don't know. People, <laughs> they've been very confused, though. They're like... Where exactly do you live? I can't figure this out. Is that your backyard? And I'm like, no, it's not my backyard. That's my lake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody else is around. Well, um, you do lay in it. I don't know if someone could lay in a lake and look like they own it, but <laughs> if anyone does, it's you. <laughs> and I do it on a very small float, if you've seen. It, the float <laughs> very, is very, very, barely submerged, right, or well, mostly submerged. So I actually have a hack, right? People think I'm floating far. Here we go. I float very close to where my butt is actually planted in the sand. So you don't move. So I don't move. Ah. Exactly. Well, are you afraid of uh, extending out No, but if lake? I'm going to smoke the cigar. You don't want to, like, be stranded. What if a lake snake comes by or something, and I got to, like, you know, scurry my Do you way. have lake snakes? There was a lake snake. I saw No. Him. Yeah, yeah. It's a small little guy. I like to be unsure when I'm smoking cigars. Unsure. Yeah. I don't want to be touched by, oh, my God, is that a bee? Speaking of thing, look at that where? big thing. Oh, that is. Is oh, that a hornet? CV. You got hornets down here? No, CV. Yeah, oh, boy. Come here, there, it's on the other side. It is on the other side. Talking about nature. Look, 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 Is that a bee? Ooh. It's a hornet. Hold on. Let me kill him. You allergic? I'll, I'll kill him. I'm a savage here. I'm the, I'm the real man. Watch You're, this. He's going to get stung. Mike, talk to Don't get me stung. All right, here's the play by play. He's going over to the hornet. I need something to smoke. Yeah, oh, I'm a savage. And he goes, I need something. Don't use your phone. Oh. Yeah, he's got books. Oof. Did you get him? Literally, I mean this. How about those eyes? Oos. Is that the is that the best example of ADD you've ever seen? Oos. Put the camera on him. CD. It looked so. Dave, where Dave is sitting. Wait, let me explain this real quick. Where Dave's that sitting, his oh, drink this, not that book. The <laughs> this is not a sponsor. The, the cabinet is right at the level of your mouth. It looked like the Hornet was going to crawl right into your mouth. There you go. I think Pete is going to be pissed at this. Pete is going to be upset at this. YouTubers are really yeah out, 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 out. what a treat if you're listening to the audio experience it's about a two inch hornet there, there, there. that lives in this basement up, up, up. is that boy paying rent yeah, it's almost right there. wow whoa <laughs> and look we got a body part how about that catch um you're at the height where it looked like it was gonna crawl right in your mouth yeah that would suck well all right, you know, this we're episode back, baby. sponsored by uh, <laughs> Hornets. There we go. All right, hopefully no more Hornets. Dude, my um my tooth is very sensitive. I had a uh I had a little dental experience. Run in. Um what I have. Okay, so I go to the dentist, I get my cleaning. She really taught me how to floss. I think you were talking about this one time where you got to really go to the left and the right versus just like straight up and down. Yeah, right? Yeah. So I've had two cavities now in my life. Really? Yeah, not good. It's probably the Oreos. Well, prob- it's, not a lot. Pro- it's not a lot. Oh, really? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I have uh, tight teeth, so I, they don't get cavities. But I've heard eat. a lot of people. But that's my really gums, not a lot for your My gums get inflamed. Yeah, 33, two cavities. Yeah, no big deal. That's not bad 33 at 33-inch biceps. Um, so it's probably from I all had the donuts. These, <laughs> five, five Oreos per day. I had these. So it's back to uh, on the bottom left side. So they got filled already because this was a couple years ago that I got yeah. these cavities. And I apparently I grind so hard that I've actually cracked the filling. Ooh. Right. So she was in there and she's like, ah, I could take the filling out with my tool. I'm like, please don't. That just sounds like weird. So she kept like clicking something, clicking something. She said, you know what? Come back and I'll fill it. So I come back a week later and I tell her the story, the horror stories that I've had in the past. 
you you remember where the guy like put his standing on you? He literally put his leg like on top of me to get leverage, and yeah. he's like, "Hold on, but crick, crick, crick. he pulls was like, my this is my out. opportunity to get back at the man." And then if you remember. When I had the oral cancer scare, yeah, because they saw something on my tongue, but it was yeah. actually from the Crohn's disease. Yeah. So when that you went same from smoking guy, zero cigars a day to four, <laughs> yeah. So then that same dude sticks a massive needle into my tongue to give me the biopsy, and then clips out like a hole puncher, clips out a piece of my tongue, right? So I I just can't stand the whole process now. So I tell her about it, and she's like, "No, no, you have nothing to worry about." So then she she numbs me a little bit, and she goes, "Put your head back," and again. The same needle comes out, but she did it so smooth, so swift, didn't make a big deal of it. She knew that I was very sensitive. I'm a big, big baby. Um, and you know what happened? What? She ends up filling, refilling my teeth, and I fell asleep at the dentist. Wow. Right? You so I've been exhausted. I mean, I was exhausted. Yeah. But I, that's never happened to me because typically I sit there and I'm a little, a little anxious. She probably gave you a little something. It was know? like, this guy's got shut up. You think so? Yeah. He's like, tell me all about his <laughs> dental history. I don't give a <laughs> shit. I'm just trying to fill a cavity here. <laughs> and she gave you a sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So now I have to be very conscious, though, because I'm not, I don't want to do that again. So I have to really floss every day. And everybody on uh, you luck. know listening to this podcast, if you don't floss, make sure you floss to the left, into the gum, and the right, not just up and down. My uh, dentist made me do a mouthwash. She was like, just keep doing the mouthwash, but do it more often. And I was like, all right. So I heard that's bad. I don't know if it's good. That's what I heard, too. But then she told me, and I'm like, I'll listen to you. She Remember, did I tell you what happened? She tried to get me back like two or three times. I'm Mm. like, miss, I can't afford this. Every time you come here, you whack me for $200. Yep. I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you abuse me. And you abuse me. I don't even have a good experience. I walk (laughs) out of here, I can't eat for a week. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I don't want to rub it in, but, you know, my insurance pays 100%. Oh, yeah, it must be good to have insurance. And I don't know if you remember my chip tooth. I don't. You know, I'm, I hit it well. I don't say updated with your, I hit your it well. uh, dental record. I hit it well. <laughs> he keeps asking. I, I don't know if you remember. I hit it very well, but I had a chipped tooth right in the right in the front, too. I have one. So on she my, bonded it. I have this. And now, look, I got some coffee stains here. but I got chipped tooth in my front one. Um, oh, by the way, the No Snooze Boys, we do have an opportunity to get our uh, teeth I'm, whitened. I'm a man. We have a partner. I'll do it. Uh, Hudson Valley Teeth Whitening. I'm down. So, <laughs> down. I'm serious. I'm down for Our that. girl Cassie over there wants to... Uh, I want to collab. I want to look like uh, who's who's got like good teeth in the industry. I want them to be so bright that people are like, oh, oh. oh. that's part of the glow up, right? Where, yeah, where it's like looks fake. I yeah. want it to look fake. <laughs> like, look at Mike's teeth. You know who Those did it? Ridiculous. It, it looked ridiculous. You remember Ronnie? He yeah. from Jersey Shore. Yeah. Exactly. That's uh, yo, what I want. dude. He he came back one year and it was just like, yeah. Bing, 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 Bing. They probably, but, but I think they're veneers. Oh, 100 percent. I think he pulled a hundred percent of his teeth out and put fake ones in. I don't know that you pull them out. I think what yeah, happens I think is um, you, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, you like tap shave them, them down. And shave you, like, them? you look like an That's animal. That's crazy though. Mm-hmm. I think I'm, I might do that. That's crazy. I'm too afraid though to take them out and then get yeah. real bad veneers. In the <laughs> That's I mean, most yeah. um, most celebrities like if you notice like they'll have perfect teeth and you're like, did they always have perfect they, teeth? No, and they, they don't. Right? No, yeah. you see a picture. My mother like, has old perfect picture? teeth. Yeah, she never had you have cat- good teeth. No, I don't. The only people have perfect teeth is when you talked about this. You're missing me, my father. I don't know if Frank has them. We were born without the second row. So these two teeth are supposed to be here, but they moved them in because I had a gap. Oh. Isn't that wild? Callie's got a little gap ski. Yeah. But see how little they are? It's because yeah. they're not supposed to be there. They're supposed to be one row removed. They have good body fat percentage, though, so at least you got that. Teeth? Yeah, yeah zero. Te- yeah. It's amazing. Incredible. There's Only no room. In my body. <laughs> <laughs> you had to bring it up, Dave. You had to bring it That's up. That's a good, good win. Good win. Good yeah. win. Um, speaking of, I know you guys are good on the uh, the food game, so. Um, I have a little recipe for you. Overnight oats, which a lot of people do, right? I like how we asked him recipes in the past, and he's like, "No, I eat everything one one. It's got to be one thing. One <laughs> well, thing. I don't do recipes. I don't do Remember recipes. that. He like got mad at us. <laughs> yeah, Same thing. I mean, whole foods true. only. Whole foods only. So, <laughs> All right, whole foods. Let's hear your right. recipe. No, it's not. It's, Add salt and pepper to your yeah, chicken. Literally. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Literally. So it's oats. It's rolled oats. oats? <laughs> oats. Why are you saying it like that? <laughs> rolled oats, and uh, so you take a Greek yogurt, vanilla Greek yogurt, get that extra protein. What That's brand? What brand? What brand? Protein, by the way. Um, Oikos Triple Zero can't can't beat it. Vanilla right into the oats. Oikos Pro. Oikos no extra five grams of Pro. So it's twenty grams. Yeah, twenty grams. Wow, you don't know that's about pretty that. Big. No, you don't no. know about the Oikos Pro. No, it's a little on the topper shit. Higher that's shelf. pretty good. You're probably going mid shelf. Uh, yeah, I do. You're going eye level. I'm I'm looking for the wow. See, stuff. you go straight to the top. <laughs> so <laughs> I scoop that in there. Then I go a uh, cup of lactate milk because you know the Crohn's nice, not, mm. very nice. Yeah, I gotta stay away. So can you have um, almond milk? Can what? You can have almond milk. Same yes, concept. Yes. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Yep. 
um, cinnamon, a little vanilla extract, peanut butter, chop up bananas, blueberries, and strawberries. Sprinkle it on the top, put it in the fridge, Boom. good to go for the next day. The only difference, oh, I'm sorry, and I left out the vanilla bean protein from our sponsor, Orgain. So it's a little different, though, because you typically get the 20 grams of the protein, but yeah. now I've added the 15. Because you got the Oikos. Because I got the Oikos, yeah. and the Oikos really is the key there. So it's an extra 15. And the so oats got a little pro, no? I'm not a math guy. That's 35 grams of the About five protein. grams from the oats, too, no? And the milk. No, not, not five oats grams. Oats don't have five grams? No, nah, I don't think so. Sure. Yeah. Positive. I don't know about that. All right. I interrupted Google. your clip, though, so run through the ingredients again real quick. Hit me quick. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. Good thing I wrote it down here. See, so I'm you conscious. Got, you got Greek yogurt, Greek yogurt, the vanilla, that's the Oikos triple zero, into the oats, um, which gives you the 35 grams of protein because you got the 20 from the vanilla bean orgain, lactate milk. I used the 1%. Oats. Oh, I forgot. The cinnamon I told you about, but I didn't tell you about the honey. Oh, local drizzle honey? The, dri local honey. Drizzle the local honey on top. It's very good for allergies, too, by the way. And since my main man, Chansey, has passed away, I haven't even been taking my Allegra D anymore. Right? And then, sorry, sorry to get off track. Blueberries, yeah. strawberries, bananas. Not me. And you got yourself a uh, nice little overnight oats. If you want some more simple and less chaotic, <laughs> take the overnight oats. You <laughs> add 48 grams. Throw in... 48 grams? No, okay, 60 Ambrose. grams. 60 grams of oats. <laughs> okay, Ambrose. <laughs> Listen, see, I know they're not a sponsor, but Ghost Protein makes a Oreo protein. Ooh. David, one gram of sugar only. Wow. It's nice. That's pretty good. You put it in the overnight oats with almond milk, yep. it tastes like an Oreo for wow. breakfast. You have that with a... <laughs> you, you have that with a nice coffee. Wow. It's like you're having a cookie and coffee for breakfast. Ooh. And then... Fresh strawberries right on top of that. You slice them nice and thin so During, you get a little volume. So you wait till the morning to do oh, that? Oh, yeah, overnight. No, it's been the morning you do the strawberries fresh. Yeah, I don't like that. It takes too much time. All right. You, you know can what do I mean? it overnight, and then they have sh a sugar-free um, whipped cream. Ooh. See, yours is more like an ice cream. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you always it's find nice. a way. You always find a way. So either do that or just gobble six eggs like I do. Oh, you I know? have to tell you. Thank you for reminding me. A big gobble. I was like, you know what? I love a good egg salad. Like, I've had a couple egg salads out. And if I'm if I'm allowed to eat the whole egg, that's where a lot of that flavor comes from, right? Mm -hmm. When you got that, you got that nice yolk, yep. and then you add some salt pepper to it. It's beautiful. Maybe a little uh, low calorie, little mayonnaise, just mm -hmm. lubricate a little bit, make it nice and smooth, and a uh, little little um, little uh, any crunchies in there. Little mustard. Okay. Yeah, you do need a little crunch. You're right. right. So like, are we doing like onion in there? Are we doing a little celery? So I didn't do anything, but oh. I put it on a um, <laughs> Ezekiel it. bread. Okay. As like a you Not know Dave's breakfast bread, toast. Right? That bread sucks. That bread. That bread is trash. That was. <laughs> I always have more calories eating the good stuff. Remember that? Yeah. I'll good never name, forget. Though. Really good name. Dana gets it every once in a while, and I look it in the fridge. And I'm like, you know, I, I close it right <laughs> on. Um, Ezekiel bread till I die. But I have to say, I did the method of uh, boiling eggs a little harder than I remember. <laughs> okay. Do you do the cool bath and all that stuff? Uh, well, you want to do it right before you peel it. So you, but the cool bath, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, then yeah. it comes. But it's quick. a lot more like work than I remember. It is a lot of work. But you know, to to you roll it, you get in a flow. There you go. So I made about eight eggs, and I did a uh, you know with the four I'm allowed to have, I made like a little egg salad. Incredible. Mm. And you know what? You could prep that. The reason yes. I don't have my, I love eggs in the morning, and I like them over easy with the Ezekiel toast and mm -hmm. a couple strawberries, which is what I'm allowed to have. A little avocado. But the time to clean. So I'm like, man, I, I go to the overnight oats, but it's nice to switch it up. Yes, keep the yes. body guessing. When you have oats every morning, it gets monotonous. I've done eggs in a bag for, I don't even know, 20 years now, and sometimes it does get boring. Point being, though, I, I think you're right. I think when you have different styles of things, yes. it tastes like a different meal. It's a little yep. treat, and you stay on track. So I'm going to incorporate the egg salad as a breakfast because that's you just bang and go. Mm. I, I can't do the whole egg like an like an insane no, person. It's just, it's walking around, six, bro. walking around with a bag of eggs. <laughs> no one does that. What, that's what you, used to talk shit when I used to drink. Egg, that's worse. No, if you if you're not. walking around with a bag of hard boiled eggs, you're nuts. Sometimes it's in my pocket. You're nuts. Sometimes it's in the pocket, bro. You're nuts. But it's just quick six, man. Do we have a an over under on how long this lasts? This trend. What? what? The you know the new no he's been doing it I think no, I've been doing it I just the other stuff's not coming together so well. do, so do <laughs> we the have stress no levels through the roof the sleep's <laughs> terrible the workouts I yeah. give it three months See, last my... last week I had a really you know what's frustrating about my life 
awesome week. Worked out great. Did my legs, like hammered the legs. They look couldn't good. walk. Good thighs. Thank you, thank you. Um, and then I got rocked with work. And I was like, you know what? Put up or shut up. This is the push before everything dies down. You were you thought you're never gonna sell a property again. You asked for this. Boom. You can't let the opportunity slip through your hands. And then I went F it and I was pulling all nighters and doing all this stuff this week. Sausage party this weekend. Hundred <laughs> tickets sold. We're pushing Let's go. tickets, Let's baby. Go. Let's go. Little stressed about that though, because I'm like, wow, hundred people are gonna show up. <laughs> Let's go. Um, so we're going to do a Costco run later today. Frustrating thing is like I know what I gotta do, it's just find the time. But anyway, progress. Don't beat yourself up. We're getting there. Life is good, baby. Um, I know you're doing events, so I just want to share. I'm doing one event. Well, of one. I don't event. think I'm ever doing another one. One, your <laughs> your posts about people asking you if you sell. Is that so funny? Is that really hundred percent? You, <laughs> someone else. Like there was maybe somebody asked me. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating. I must have talked to. <laughs> you know, so when I'm doing the Tell Mike Saint show or No Snooze, whatever I'm doing, you know, when people see you at a different environment and yes. bring that up. Yes. That's happened to me the last two weeks about sausage, about sausage more than anything else. So while I'll be showing a property, it's like a nice property. And they're like, yeah, I'm coming to the sausage party. Well, and then my go. client's like, what? Because <laughs> think about that. That sounds yeah. so weird. Yes, it does. Um, so, yeah, it'll be fun. But I'm like, wow, that branding's good. It it's is. sticky. But I don't know if it's professional for what I should be, you know? <laughs> Mike the sausage, if you will. Um, but it is funny because, like, you 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 create these things, and they're starting to become a little successful. And then you find yourself a day like I had yesterday where I'm breaking records on how many offers I've put in. Like, I'm trying to reward myself for the action, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, you want to close deals. But just the act of the amount of showings, the offers I'm putting in, the the cadence of it are my reps. Yep. So I'm, I'm excited because I'm like, all right, I put in, and this is a ballpark. And, yes, guys, so many more people in my market do way more business. They write way more offers. I'm talking about a personal best. So. Right. If it's not a lot, or if you think it, if you think it's a lot, yeah, I know it. Is. If it's not, <laughs> the other people are doing more. I get it. So I did six point five million dollars worth of offers in like a twenty four hour period. Mm -hmm. So when I was putting offers in, yep, never yep. done that, yep. right? And it, I've done it over time, but of like course. in one day is insane. Right. Of like, hey, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Yep. So that was like a personal best. Then I put um, in accepted offers. I had like six point three in one day, Beast. which is insane. Yep. Again, one fell apart already. So it happens, but just the act of it was mm -hmm. like, oh, that's kind of cool. And it gives you new numbers to to scale off of, too. Point being, though, I do all that stuff, and then in between, I'm getting, talking about insurance with a place, and they're like, what's it called? And I'm like, sausage party. <laughs> so it, like, humbles you. So you want insurance on your sausage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're like, well, who will be at this sausage party? <laughs> it, it, like, yeah. yeah. 100 men. <laughs> and and then I think to myself, I'm like, how to get myself in this position? You know what I mean? <laughs> the big sausage, if you will. But it's um, all good. It's all fun. It's all it's all pressure, though. Yeah, no. And this absolutely. week was the first time in a little while where I was like, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do all this stuff. Yeah. So then when you texted me, you're like, what should we talk about? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was gonna get sausage back. Yeah, we're, we're gonna talk about the party because I got push tickets. <laughs> But I wrote back, like, I need to do less. Yes. Because every time I say that, I do more. Right. And right. He, F and CD called it last time. He's like, okay. 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 <laughs> yep. Um, no, same same thing uh, on our end. You're you know, selling sausage? Work, no, no, no. But work is a – it's a busy season. I've um, got a couple uh, speaking things actually booked cool. as well for a couple local schools. Shout out Manhattanville College. Oh. Uh, I've got one I'm for – Alma Mater. Alma Mater. How do you say So C, CV and I uh, – CV went there as well. Really? But, yeah, so – you want to know the name of this uh, this uh, conference? Uh, let me guess. Let me guess. It, it's the fifth annual Change the World conference. I said, you want me to speak? Unbelievable. This? <laughs> you, you want me to speak in this? The world of what? I know. <laughs> change the world. I mean, I live in my own world if you want me to talk about that. So uh, that's pretty cool. But no, on the, um, on the uh, town front. That's cool. We actually, so a lot of big businesses, right? They like to do employee appreciations town that i work in we like to do that as well so we came together and we were like all right but how do we do this to where like the entire town can benefit you're talking police department fire department the the nature center community resources parks and recreation everybody. i gotta give you credit like you guys deal with these events and stuff every day yes yeah yeah i couldn't do it and uh juneteenth is coming up right yep. so we have a two yeah 
two Juneteenth events back to back. But you get this stressed is, out about it, or no, because you've done so many, it's like it's clockwork now. Right. And we we have a nice little team that we collab with, so the department heads get together, and we were like, listen, we want to make something pretty nice, yeah, for for the town employees because there's over 600 town employees, so you can't just like Jesus Christ. One guy was like, yeah, just bring them muffins. <laughs> Everyone loves a good muffin, which is true, but like that's almost you know offensive. So not to interrupt, but our crew is very that way. Like they're so because we're dealing with a hundred year old sausage company, right? And they oh. they're they're from you know they're one hundred and five years old, right? Right, that's pretty cool. Not the guy, the yeah. you, the new owners are younger, but but it's like a community, you know, like an old school Italian yes. community where people are just yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, and I'm like, well, we're not. There's a hundred people coming right. to pay a lot of <laughs> yeah. money. Like that's what I'm saying. So we had our meeting last night. And everyone was so casual. I feel like such an. I'm like, I'm freaking out. And these people are all like, yeah, we'll throw some on the patty and this and that. Right, and it's probably gonna be awesome. Yeah. but in my head, I'm like trying to do like write notes yes. and they're. Give them six and six and this and that and I'm like right, six right. and six. See, like uh, for for us, I mean, because we have the we have the town supervisor who has a, a great network that he could push out certain things. But on our end, it has to be very prepared what he's going to push out, yeah. right? Because yeah. if he pushes out something that's bad uh, and it's a bad reflection of everybody, businesses aren't going to really want to get involved. 100%. So we were like, listen, how, what can we do for 600 employees? Everybody's kind of into the the health and wellness thing. So we sat in a room and we brainstormed and we actually got a next gen. What is it? Next gen optimal wellness to sponsor the entire thing so we were talking about how we were going to pay for this next gen is that that guy they next have they have wellness? they have oh, no, 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 they no. have multiple locations but yeah. there's one in uh in White it's Plains not the greenwich guy we went to the spot no right? oh no, it sounds no, no, familiar no. It does. doesn't it? it does um so they said you know what we'll absolutely sponsor you guys right cool so we'll sponsor not only the breakfast but we will bring your entire town for the day from 8 to 5 p.m yeah. acupuncture for free um cryo for free cool massages for free Compression boots, which I've never tried. I don't even know what that is. It's like a big compression sleeve on your on your legs. Cool. Maybe it'll make your legs bigger, so you should come try. No, compression will make um, them smaller. <laughs> oh, that's right. Science, dude. But so, like, <laughs> science. science, science, science. So, you know, we, uh, oh, and uh, the cardiovascular screening, which is huge, right? So Can we, anyone come we to wanted to tie <laughs> we wanted to tie in local business because typically you'll always see a town employee in the local deli, you know, you know, in the, in the local stores, local businesses. So why wouldn't you want to give back? And a lot of businesses didn't jump on the opportunity, but the ones that did now we took it even a step further because this, um, health and wellness company actually accepts our town insurance. Yep. So for them, they were like, Oh, we'll absolutely do one day for free yeah. because in return, hopefully we'll be able to convert some clients over yeah. and they can use their actual insurance in the place. Hundred percent. I mean, it was, it was a win. Smooth. Right. Isn't it great when you find a good partner like that? Yes. To that point, I've realized during this whole bonanza, like things that I enjoy doing. One of them is I don't and like I don't for stuff that's not within the real estate world. I don't like dealing with details, mm. right? I like giving you a concept, promoting the concept, and then someone executes it. When I did like the bus company and all the things way back when, that was my role. My role was like marketing, high level stuff. You figure out the details. Yep. I'm gonna put give you problems to figure out. So I've grown in the real estate world to enjoy being the executor because yes. you need to be. But then I realized like when it's not in that world, I'm not a huge fan of it. Mm. Like even when we host at yep. like our house events, I'm like high level. It's a different atmosphere. I don't have to worry about su uh, super specific details. I just get a don't run out of food is what I think. Right? That's like when you host an event, don't run out of food and everything else take care of itself. Booze, yeah, booze or food. Too, yep. So that's like, so I'm I'm learning a lot about myself by doing these new things that I haven't done in a long time. Yep. And then it reminds me, like, oh, the reason you don't do them often is because you don't like this part. So if you're going to keep doing them, you got to have that piece of the puzzle solidified, which we kind of have. Yep. Um, and they're growing into that role. But it's it's uh when you put you the stress test, you really, it, everything gets clear mm. under stress. Yes. You realize that? Uh, but first it's unclear, right? And then um, it gets clear. The, the, I find the clearness once I'm, over the point of being stressed where i'm gotcha, like i'm gotcha. so stressed and then i sit down and i'm thinking like damn like all right how to get in this position and then i realize like oh because you didn't do the x y and z or you know because you don't enjoy that or you know yes 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 having a good team is like everything probably the most important part of 100%. any event yeah even and if you know all the things maybe you know but if mm -hmm. you have a good team in place that help you out it's one less thing off your shoulders that, for sure yeah. and we we have a good team i also I'm not, I haven't learned in the past of like, all right, well, this is your prime real estate time. So maybe next time don't do an event right in the middle of it. Right. And maybe don't do a bunch of food shoots while you're in the middle of peak season, do all your food sheets, shoots in the dead of summer, right. in the winter when you have a little slower. So I'm like, I'm not being smart about juggling all the to do's. Mm -hmm. I'm just being stubborn in a sense of like, oh, we try to get out a couple of week or whatever it is. But it's experience though too. Right. So 
it's always a, a learning one hundred percent opportunity. But sometimes I fr- I get frustrated because I don't feel like I'm learning right. and doing and because ex- you're so stressed while you're doing it. Well, I'm just in the mode of getting stuff done. Yes. So I'm not worried about the cadence of it. That's right? like that's like CV. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and shout out to CV. Super and his, hard. His team. I mean, he he has one of the bigger teams in, in the town. Their their operation is pretty large. Um, they run a, a large, large summer camp, and he's in the middle of orientation, mm. right? So yesterday we got to watch him lead um, over, about ninety kids um, who are coming in for jobs. Right? That stresses me. Out. I know. So the stresses whole the out. whole process is 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 very stressful. But um, you know, year after year they get better and better. And and the energy though yesterday was was great. Yeah, there was a couple funny moments. You know, where some people were speaking and they were kind of dragging on. Yeah, you know, and everyone's like, oh, boy. they just cheered him off. Oh boy, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, but the energy was was phenomenal, CV. So uh, I know it's not a not an easy time for you, but uh, when, shout out to you. When you're stressed, CV, with like all that stuff, do you think I always divert divert to like just get it done and figure it out later? Do you know what I mean? Like I know this isn't the most efficient way to do it, but I know I'll get it done. Does that make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. Is that how you I mean, do? Yeah, it? I mean, just you, you try. I I try to prepare as much as I can, but there's always so many other variables that yeah. could happen or will happen. Yeah. And at that point, you're absolutely right. It's just you gotta just put your head down, try and knock out as much as you can, and yeah. get it done right. Yeah. And then in the aftermath, then you kind of try and like, oh, what could have what could have been done better? How could we have prevented X, Y, or Z? And we talk about control. We talked about control last time, and I'm finding that it's hard for me to like delegate when it's the brand like tell my same brand is going to suffer if it doesn't get executed right mm. don't know so, what you mean right there um <laughs> is it, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't know what you but mean. that's what i'm dealing with because like even they're they're going to pick up the roles and i'm see, like and, and that's that is so far from i guess i'm i'm so well this is our that. first event yes i'm not in the business to do events it's complimentary you're not, you're not event, a sausage event planner no i'm not a sausage <laughs> event planner so like when it's SCP. something so out of so it's something so out of my comfort level and the risk of it is pretty high for like brand someone like slips on a sausage and anything it's, right it's over seriously <laughs> you slip on a you slip on an uncooked sausage we're in trouble yeah you slip on mike's sausage during the event <laughs> we're gonna have to cancel this um but it's hard because it's like if it was something like complimentary, it is complimentary in marketing and all that stuff, but it's like outside of the realm. And then it's hard to delegate even farther out because I'm like, man, this could sometimes I get worked up on what could. But it kind of sounds like you're almost questioning the why you're doing it, which I believe you're already committed. So once you're committed, it doesn't matter if it's worth it or not. 100%. Right now. You just got to dive, dive in. And when you're in. Go through it and one hundred percent. Weather looks it. good, right? That's what? big. Weather looks yeah, good. Yeah, that's a knock on wood. And that's something we didn't have a control. But there, there's a lot of. I mean, but there's a lot of like even birthday parties and stuff that are outdoors, right? Cali's having one in a couple. Yeah, weeks, but same I don't thing. care because like um, if you're coming to like my kid's birthday party, you're just coming. You're not paying a ticket price, right? Right. Right. right? Yeah. So like part of me is like, if you're paying a ticket price, I want you to be worth it for. If you're bringing sausage your kids, in the rain is pretty good. It would I mean, be interesting. You know. We, <laughs> slippery sauce. The team was pretty funny. The team was. Pre- was your mic on for that, or did I get the, credit? Oh, wow. The team was pretty funny, and they were like, "If it rains, we'll just get every, tell everyone to wear their bathing suits, and we'll get slip insides." And I was like, "The place that we're hosting it might not be happy, but it'd be a fun time." Yeah, <laughs> slide right in. <laughs> just everyone wear sausage costumes. Oh, I'm dead. This is hilarious. Um, <laughs> this is getting better and better. Honestly, I mean, the marketing here on this podcast for this sausage party, yeah. this thing is going to well, be successful. Well, this is going to come out after. Oh, so you're right. going you're gonna to hear the uh, recap of like, oh well. <laughs> It's gonna no. It's gonna be. Wait, great. when is it? This Saturday. Saturday. I, this yo, Saturday? I want to go three to so, three to eight. Well, we I'm, can we can do a little clip out of here and put it on. You know, I'm, wait, five. three to eight. Yeah, three to dude. Eight. So this, this we, I'm gonna be there all day probably. So listen, I have a Juneteenth event from 10 a.m. to but about one thirty. Juneteenth event, and then I have my godson oh, Mason's so birthday. Bring him. Bring him. And em. that's the tenth. Yeah, Frank Proz. I, oh, I was just gonna drop it before you did. Which kind of sucks? Say, oh, I felt I bad. Big my guy. parents are going up to see him. Send him a sausage. Imagine. Send this up with Frank. Yeah. Give this Frank for his birthday. And he'll put links. it on the uh, as the air freshener. Use the sauce. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I that I might post that tomorrow as our last promo. Promo. Yeah. Yeah. If you want me to hold the sausage, I'll do that for you. <laughs> I can't. Come on, man. I got you. This is good marketing. <laughs> Out of all the things we're doing too, it's our first event. We're going with the sausage party. It's so like I'm glad you see it because I 100. It it's me. absurd. Yeah, and that was part of the magic of it. But then I'm like, maybe we hurt ourselves with the brand. I don't know. No, this isn't hurting. I think everyone's getting inspired right now. <laughs> Episode 152. No, I have inspired. to say though, the food is phenomenal. So I think long term for them, they're going to be happy. The the company. Yeah. 
because like all these people that fought would never go in and try it right unless someone cooked it for that you know yes, what i mean yes if you're shoving sausage in people's mouths <laughs> They're going to, in the future. Oh, my God. Hopefully, this is not a sausage fest. Right. Hopefully, you're inviting a good amount of people. CB, you got you should have started so funny, a uh, I mean, sausage count. It's, ding, ding, it's, how many technically, times it's technically like a family event. Like We have 20 kids that are on the thing, and a lot yeah. of them are Bigger under little, the age Bring five. all your sausages wow. down. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Enough with the sausage. Can you, CB, let them know where we get this protein at. We wanted to take a quick second to let you guys know that we partnered with our good friends over at Orgain.com. We're happy to offer our listeners 30% off by entering the code NOSNOOZE30. Again, that's NOSNOOZE30 for 30% off your first order. If you're on the market for a new protein powder, nutritional shake, protein bar, or Mike's favorite, collagen peptides, Orgain is your one-stop shop. As all of you know, my Crohn's disease is currently in remission, and the only protein I use is from Orgain. My personal favorites are the chocolate peanut butter and the vanilla bean. With the code, you can try a two pound tub for under $20. Talk about not snoozing. Go get yours today. Now, back to the epi. Um, so today, as we kind of alluded to before, you know, we, we, um, we, talk- we, we dodged over <laughs> I don't know who I'm dodging over here. <laughs> he if, just you're, said, if you're not, if you're yeah. listening, he just twitched. Yeah, I just twitched. Uh, so it's, it's a combination between doing less and then also learning how to do more with less right which are things that we've spoke about Dave, i can't do it Dave. <laughs> things we spoke about prior but i mean the greatest one of the greatest and best changes i think we can all make in our own lives is figuring out how to maximize our our time right now our personal time management um i think there's a million ways there's a million methods to try this but you always find yourself reverting back to old habits, right? So it's not until you can really condition the brain and have specific systems versus just trying different people's training methods. So the hope today is to just have a a nice conversation and hopefully you can get a takeaway. And if you don't get a takeaway, then uh, go to Mike's Sausage Party and hopefully that uh, provides you some value for the day. I just got a notification. We sold four more tickets. Let's go. Someone out there is here. Maybe the neighbor. Live, Live feed, live feed. Uh, so what what's been going on? What's that, going on? Yeah, because I shot you a text. Three seconds later, it comes back. I need to do less. Well, I was probably doing a lot. <laughs> I, was doing, I was holding things. And, uh, I was on such a good trajectory of just selling in Greenwich, just like staying within my my thing. You know, just focuses on certain parts of the real estate game, and now I'm selling everything from commercial properties to which I like. I enjoy all of it to sausage, and I'm adding all these like you know, things I got to do. And whenever I miss putting one, one of the kids down to sleep, like whether that's Juliana or, or mm-hmm. Livy, I feel this un- unbelievable amount of guilt mm. where I'm like, they, I could, I need to be better about saying no to things right. and pushing them into time schedules. Right. But the reality is daycare ain't cheap. Yeah. So I'm like, when I have the opportunity to go sell a property, I'm going to go do, do it. it. Right. So I'm constantly getting pulled in two directions and I get discouraged on myself because I'm getting farther away from the focus of where I was going. But the reality is when you start a company, you have to start more broad again, yes. which we've talked about. Right. But mentally it's difficult because I have flashbacks. You know, it's eight o'clock. I'm sitting in my car answering phone calls and being like, man, I thought I was past this, mm-hmm. you know, but Do you- I'm being critical of myself. Yeah, of course. Of course. As we, we all are. Um, so on the saying no to things, right, that's that's huge, because if yeah. you had the ability to say no and I had the ability to say no, then, of course, yeah, your time's going to be free. But do you have like a certain um, curriculum for yourself that when somebody asks you to do a tat? Yeah, honestly, um, where if it doesn't fall into that curriculum of you like, you know, benefiting in some way from a business standpoint or a personal relationship standpoint, you don't really do it. My problem is I can rationalize anything. So that's, that's where I problem. think the curriculum, yeah, yeah. right, is a nice outline for you to to do certain things. Because for me, if it if it doesn't align with I'm big on the skill stacking these days, right? Yeah. So anything, any extracurricular that I'm gonna get involved in, it has to check my boxes of it benefiting me in another aspect of my life. Right. I'm not just 
um, selling sausage, selling sausage for no reason, unless I can sell sausage. And then I have an opportunity to speak to the people and meet, you know, 75 new people. Yeah. I have an opportunity to practice public speaking in front of a large crowd. Yeah. Like those are the justifications that I make in my yeah. little, I'm calling it a curriculum. But my, my point is I can rationalize anything but because also, it's real estate. Oh, so okay. I'm like, it contributes to me being more in the community, mm -hmm. anything. Give me, ask me. Well, so anything. what? What about a guy who's just like you know has a good relationship with you, but it's like, hey, Mike, you know, I'm looking for you know a two thousand dollar a month apartment, and you is know, it in Greenwich? It could be wherever. But my family, you know, doesn't really live here. I just need this for for side business. Well, stuff like that. that. I could. It depends. So if it's less than a year, I'm like, listen, I can't help you because right. So That's I say my point. no to so you some no. stuff, but there's um. I guess the problem is, too, a volume of business that comes in all at once, right. you know, because it all does contribute to it. But the, the question is- Do you is filter not, volume? Huh? Do you filter the volume? Well, that's the thing. The thing, the, maybe the next step is like, I need to be like, all right, well, is this, is it a priority? Instead of, is it something I'll accept? Is it a priority? Can I do it? Can right. I even do it? Right. You know? Yeah. So scaling businesses in general, right? Like you have to find- Away, because yes, you can justify everything, and you can say, "Listen, well, I could meet this person who can put me on to the very next big thing." The yeah. reality is, though, you've been in the game over ten years now, right? So you have certain connections. So you have to have the ability to just visualize it and say, "Listen, I would really love to help you, but I have, you know, a lot of things on my priority list that are above that." You don't tell that person that, yeah, obviously, yeah. but yeah. you could throw them a sausage and say, "Hey, listen, you know, I'll see you next time." <laughs> throw my sausage. guy. Yeah, um, I guess. I guess it's not so much like. I guess it's having enough bandwidth to take on the priority, yes, which is the real estate stuff, mm -hmm. right? When I put things in positions where I'm, my attention's getting pulled elsewhere, and I don't have enough bandwidth to get all all of the volume done, then I get frustrated with myself because I'm like, I have no time right. because I have these other commitments. When in reality, this is the priority. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, on the saying no thing too. For me, I ask myself a question: Is this going to take me out of the rhythm that I'm in right now? Yeah. That's good. I'm a big rhythm momentum guy. guy. I'm a bit rhythm reg, if you will. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's no you know, rhythm like, in my world. That's the problem. Well, that, and that's where I guess your world is different from mine. But there's so many times that I have to. You know, politely tell people, listen, I can't, I, I'm just locked into something right now. I yeah, can't yeah. break my focus. I got to get this task done. Yeah. And sometimes they look at you and you could tell they're like, damn, this guy's being an asshole right now. But yeah. if you were me, your head would be spinning. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. this is my way of just making sure that, you know, I'm going to get to you and I'm going to give you the time during your week. Yeah. Right. To where I'm, I'm helping you out. But there's just certain times that, I'm out of, I'm out of rhythm. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. not a good thing. If I'm out of rhythm, that means that the whole, business could potentially be out of out of rhythm right yeah 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 I, uh yeah it's just uh you know it's a frustration because of i feel overwhelmed all the time and then um i'm getting it done like don't get me wrong it's all working it's all positive it's all in the right trajectory but i'm definitely thinking to myself like listen do i need to do this thing do i need to do that thing do i is there a way that i can structure it yep. um so that i know and i've done that in the past where i'm like all right i do food shoots between whatever, two and five on Fridays, and that's it. Yep. And if they can't do it, they can't do it. I'm not going to do it weekends, nights. And then once the chaos hit, I was like, oh, I'll shoot it here because that's the only time I can do it. Right. And so I just got to get back to the basics. Um, and I think once summer hits, I'll be able to take a breath. Mm -hmm. but when you're in, you can't take breath. You're mm -hmm. just like trying to you know, get business done, stay survive, float. stay afloat. But CV. How many new things have you added uh, this year? That are like not the norm. Not many new things, but new opportunities. So like in the commercial, when you say new opportunities, things that you're actively engaged into now. So the the hard thing is like in a perfect world, if you if you gave me ten condos to sell in Greenwich, I could do it all day, right? Because I know the cadence of it. All right, yeah. this and that. But then when I get someone who comes to me like, listen, I want you to sell, which is what I'm trying to get into and learn and work into, like this uh, garage that has a multiple use and has this and that, like. But that's, that's, but that's all real estate. Yeah, it's so all, it's all part of your job. Yeah, the, I didn't really add but much. Like the sausage the only, party, like <laughs> that was a part funny, of. The, but well, that's a that part. Was, of, that was like an addition that is complimentary, maybe, but it's yeah, that, that was probably the biggest addition of late that we added in an event, which I don't really do events, so I don't, I don't really know how to like. But why? So we have a team member. If you can, you know, I don't know yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I can rationalize it. So I always thought about doing stuff like that because it'd be fun. I thought it was a good compliment. I don't have the opportunity to meet people in person that but, follow the accounts. But where's the why? Just to try and get those things kind of... Uh, it's another way to get more business, I mean, for real estate. Because so, I'm in the community, people see me, they meet me. Oh, 
I follow his account. I know, you know, I know well, he sells I, I real estate. I definitely understand the benefits, and I, I understand the rationale for yeah. sure. <laughs> if we're going back to episode one of um of this year, yeah, we talked about focus, the art, right? <laughs> <laughs> the so, big focus. So what happened on over the, the last five months? <laughs> well, the the hard part is, is like it is within my world. Like, right, it is. This it's is not, a company. Yeah, but you it. even said it right now, though. You I'm can rationalize gonna, anything. No, but let so me let me give you the play outside of your box. You're always going to be unfocused on. Yeah. On, well, here was the rationale, right? Costco is an area of town. I've done a lot of business. Um, I have a lot of listings there. I have a, a lot of happy people that I've dealt with. I believe in it. I help promote it. Um, Scarpelli's is a place that we did a Tell Mike Sing episode, the most successful episode we've had to date. We had like, I don't even know how many views. It was insane. Um, the girl that is Greenwich Foodie, who I work with, has been wanting to grow into like an events role and do events for Tell Mike Sing herself. So it was a good application of her time. Um, she is invested in Scarpella's in a sense of like they live in that community they know everyone it's a very like uh low-hanging fruit event that we could start with so all of the the pieces lined up how i react to it and it, the way it drains on my mental and time i didn't know because it was our first time doing it you know maybe it wasn't right to do it this time but i thought to myself like man if we don't do anything like this i'll always think like we never even tried Right. So, you know? I mean, I, I think the idea is great. I mean, we know we're joking about it and it's funny, yeah. but it's a, I think it's a cool idea, a yeah. cool event. <laughs> yeah. I guess my, my next question is, and I don't know real estate like you do. So, um, are there slow seasons in real estate? Number there one. used to be, <laughs> there used to be. So for me, Cause what, if my, what I'm trying to allude to is would have maybe a better timing yeah. on your end, maybe made it easier for you to not go crazy. Cause it sounds like, Real estate right now is a little bit crazy. Yeah. Just so from it, hearing you. Yeah. It's and hard I don't to know project. how the summer is. Are yeah. Our summer's busy. Are they kind of yeah. calm? It, it, could you have done the sausage party a little bit later? Well, on? that's what he's saying. He's saying he definitely could have found a different. But time here's the frame, problem, though. right? When we booked it, it was two months ago. Yeah. I don't know what this month's going to be. There are months like when I left my company and I started my new firm, it was eight months of slow time. So I'm like, I don't know. Maybe that's a new reality. Yeah. So like, all right, I got to create business. So these decisions are made with a different mindset of like, whole new I have time. Comes. Then I get, like I was saying before, I had a record week of activity, of volume of doing deals and getting stuff done, inspection. Like, and that's not which I can't plan for, for this time? Not at all at once, right? Like, and the problem, the I call it like feast or famine. Like when you're in the business, there's weeks where I'm like, I'm never going to sell property. I have not gotten the call. Like it's just a weird cadence, especially right. with this market where – the rates are going up. They're coming yep. down. They're going up. So it's so different than when I started. A, because now I have a lot of um, exposure to the market and a lot of people know me. So by chance, I run into people. I release now, All of a sudden, I have all this new business where in the week before, I'm like, it's a slow week. So mm -hmm. I, what I'm finding is like, no matter what I do, I have to be very conscious that it's not going to take a lot of my attention or bandwidth. So in the future... You know, if um, the Grand Foodie is with us next year, I'm gonna be like, listen, it's on you. This is your event. We'll throw your name on the the uh, the promotion. I'm here to help and support, and we we've done it a year before, but I'm not gonna be actively involved in any of the details. Right, right. Just and a then, quick question: Why couldn't it have been her event this year? Because we haven't done one yet. So I like because it's a reflection of the brand. I really want to be the first time we do stuff. I want to be involved to make sure we get it done. Are you guys like 50 50 partners? In well, the we're not events? making money on it, right? So, no, 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 I know, but in like the, you know, the idea and like what you well, guys want to both accomplish. Or? Yeah. I mean, we're all, it's all promotion for us. We, it's, it's, I would say it's all split evenly as far as like it benefits everyone the same way. Are we also splitting responsibilities even though? Um, it's a little different, right? Because like our video guy, Chris, is going to be covering the whole concept of it and like his skill set is to capture the day. So he is involved in helping out, but the execution is more on Greenwich Foodie, right. who's running a lot of it. And she's doing a great job. It's just more of me being worried than anything because right. we right. haven't done it yet. And I'm probably stressing her out more than she needs to be. <clears throat> um, but to your guys' point, like, it's a temporary time that I'm at. Like, it's there's weeks in my life where in real estate, personal life, you just have to get through the week. And make sure everything gets done. Yep. And then the following week, you debrief and say, all right, I'm not doing that again. I can't pull all-nighters on a Monday and still like be at my top level. And then you adjust. Um, 
So I'm not, it's not so much I'm I'm stressed because we're doing it. I think it's gonna be good in the future and long term. And if it's one thing we do and it's a hit and people talk about it for a while, a mm. couple of years, it's worth it. But it's more about how I go about doing it in the future. Right. I've really thought about, well, I need it's not so much me the delegation piece. I can't do everything. So I have to say next time I'm not gonna be as involved as I was. It was great. I know what's going on next year and I can check in. But I'm not going to be the one making the calls. Right, right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's big. Um, for for people in general, you, so Mike alluded to something uh, a couple minutes ago where you said that you, um, I guess for the shoots, you're doing like two to five on a Friday or something. Right. So that is actually a method. Right. Time blocking. And it's, it's co- well, Uncle T, Big Tony Robbins. Oh, he, call, he he calls that chunking. Right, and it's Ooh, it, it's I don't a, like that. It's a very effective. <laughs> it's a very effective uh, method, but it's basically when you put like tasks together um, over a set period of time with the goal of not switching gears. Right, so that it basically allows you to destroy the myth that we all have that we're great multitaskers. Yeah, and it allows you to really lock in. So, for example, for the everyday person maybe listening to this, a couple things that I do on. Um, so I have my what? time blocks. Oh, yeah, you're, you're color blocking. Yeah. Um, chunking, if you will. But so for me, for, for work emails, right, I do 45 minutes in the morning Yeah. where I'm just locked into emails and then 45 minutes before I go home. So during the day, I'm seeing emails, and if there's something pressing, cool, no problem. You take care of it. Yeah. With my one-on-ones, I, some people say, why do you stack them like that? I stack them literally four employees in a row. Yeah. Right? So it keeps me on point. It's a little bit... Uh, tough on the mental endurance yeah. to stay focused, but yeah. it forces you to basically stay focused. Um, on something the other day, I was uh, I'm planning a vacation, probably to Puerto Rico, right? Surprise! But um, Hell yeah. you know, I I used to <laughs> I used to catch myself just sitting there and kind of like one day I'm looking at flights, the next day I'm maybe looking at a hotel or a property or something. Next day I'm looking at activities, or I said, you know what? Let me try this chunking method, yeah, and let me time block it for an hour and a half and see what I could do. I was actually able to get every single thing done for this trip. I mean, where I'm staying, uh, and I haven't actually booked it yet, but where I'm staying, the activities that I want to do, all the information is literally right there now because I locked in and I focused versus me eating my apple. You know, searching for flights, then two hours later, me doing this, me doing that. Uh, so it's a great method, though, that really keeps you focused on track. And the word chunking is is pretty funny, but it but it definitely uh, definitely works. And it I think for me, it maximizes my like production. So this right? is where I get frustrated, right? Because I'm like, all right, I'm chunking. I know what I got to do. I have it up on my calendar, and like, all right, between nine and twelve is cold calls, and you know, yep. following up people, tall phone calls. And then I'll get a call from one of my clients and like, listen, like we have to close by end of June. We're going to see some properties tomorrow. Can we see these six? Right. What time are you available? Nine to 12. And I'm yeah. like, well, there so goes that, that day. But that you already know in it's your hard. business and your world is going to happen. Right? It happens in, in my business yeah. too, um, to where you you have to shift, right? But now the, the scalability, I think, of the business is – a direct reflection of how we Efficient. handle that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And how off because not every single thing, again, everybody's issue is pressing. Yeah. But on your end, not every single thing is pressing. When you're building a business, obviously you want to address as many concerns as possible. Yeah. Uh, but we have to be the ones that decide, okay, what am I going to shift my energy yeah. towards? You know? I'm I'm finding I have to get more comfortable in the movement of like for example, now that like on the way to drive here, I left like 15 messages for like cold calling because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm never going to be sitting in front of my desk right. with like a headset on with like a perfect scenario. There's no perfect scenario where I'm going to be able to time block. So I just need to know like if it's around that time and I can do it. But like what kind of cold calls are these? Hey, you know, it's Mike Pirelli. I have a client moving in from South Carolina. They're looking to get back into Glenville. If you have anything between the eight and one five range, like let me know. I'm really, we have a good buyer. Mm-hmm. Like that type of stuff. Hey, so that you know, to me, and I could be wrong. Yeah. I don't think you need to be making those calls. That's the lifeline of the business. No, 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 no. I think you need to have like an intern, right? And use your relationships. Yeah, maybe. Or and like use your public service. <laughs> use your public self yeah. to take yourself out of those sort of roles. So here's right? the thing, right? Like if I'm, I have to create relationships with everyone I work yes, with. 100%. So like if you're an agent and I make that call and you call me back and we have a conversation about it, there's a level of like trust. Yes. And like, 
you know, I get what you're saying though, like the first step. But out of se- out of ten of them, right? If yeah, you yeah. need to take three of those ten, yeah, no problem, right? But we can train somebody who can be really good on making these calls, and you could probably get it done for free by utilizing all your resources. Yeah. And it's just a way to you know do more with less, right? Because yeah, you maybe. actually don't need. Yes, it's going to take you some time, maybe, to train that one person. But we have, I mean, we have internship programs all the time. You want a yeah. you want a kid? You want a college kid? Like I can get them for you, right? So like here's here's you have relationships that you can utilize. So you're not wrong to benefit. Something that I'm really toying with is like, all right, well, the efficiency of being the one stop shop and the guy is that I can spit out info and retain info super quick. Yes. So if someone's like, hey, well, do you? Oh, I know. I talked to the guy yesterday. Like, there's an efficiency that's yes. going to come with all this and actually doing the work because I'm having those convos. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a conscious effort not to get big. Like, I don't want to be a big firm. I want to be an efficient firm, which is going to be, to your point, turn away business. Like, that's the reality. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to start turning away business to be able to do business. Right. Which is something, a muscle I don't have. I don't have that muscle yet because I feel like I'm not in a position to turn it away yet. I wouldn't either. Yeah. So there's that, like, tug and pull of, like, yeah, I could add a person. I don't want to add a person. Mm -hmm. Because then, you know, then I'm managing them. It takes time. I I know it's how you grow. But I don't want to grow in that way, if right. that makes sense. It's very it's, counterintuitive of what. But it's not even so much as a growing; it's just getting a little support. It's the it's the efficiency of what I, I'm talking so about. Can, strictly, so you efficiency. can be more efficient, not so you yeah, can grow. But but an intern, right? I don't I don't want to deal with an intern. But, or well, office it, manager, it you can call it whatever you want. Call yeah, it yeah, yeah, you want to pay them? Yes, it's an office yeah. manager. And I'm putting that just some, handles certain things. Yeah, I'm yeah. putting some pieces together for sure. Um, it's it's the and it's just management of the emotions like i get very drained because like so like monday i had an inspection that lasted from 9 30 in the morning until 4 30 at night so then i'm like damn i gotta catch up on all the stuff i didn't get done today and all the emails i didn't see Mm -hmm. even though i had my computer at the inspection i'm still managing that inspection right right? did you have to be do you have to be at the inspection yes yeah that yes Yes. they're big deals i don't think he's i I mean i don't know but yeah so like when an inspection i try to be at all the inspections because if something goes awry an inspection means we have an accepted offer and we're trying to get to a contract close that's the lifeline of the business like priority wise but the inspection is going to happen regardless whether you're there or not there, something can go wrong. Well, if the client can't be there, then I'm there for them. I'm oh, representing the buyer. Mm-hmm. So, like, I have to see what's going on right. in so case that's there a, is. That's, okay. Because if you get – so, and it's a good question because if – so if you get a report and you guys have done inspections before, you get the report and you don't have a, a context to it from your agent, nine times out of ten, deals falling apart because yep. they're going to see this huge list of everything that's wrong. Whereas if I'm there with the person, I'm like, all right, well – you're going to see a lot here. The most concern is X, Y, and Z because that's what didn't work for me, except, you know? Yes. So what you guys are saying is not wrong. It's just figuring out every time I have it figured out, I go past my limit again, right. and then I got to find the new limit and mm-hmm. then grow and then grow. Yeah, it's no, the, it's, it's overwhelming. The constant growth the, is draining yeah. because I'm like, I would love to just have an easy day. And there's no, but right now it's not realistic. So I I just had this conversation with my dad because he, um, you know, he opened a, a a farmer's, uh, insurance agency, right? Mm -hmm. Shout out Mike Regina agency. Um, Check him out. (laughs) Sponsor. Right. New York. So he, you know, gets very overwhelmed with the same type of thing. So I'm like, dad, like what are three tasks that you would be able to tell me to do right now? And immediately he's like, no, but for me to tell you how to do it, you know, you have to do X, Y, Z gets very overwhelmed. I said, I said, relax, you know, give yeah. it a minute. Yeah, yeah. What are three easy, easy things that I can do for you right now? If I said I need work to do right now, I was working for you. So he was able to identify, well, I have a list of, you know, 1,500 people that need to be called. I have mailers that need to be stamped and done. And he's doing all of this work right now, right? Yeah. And he, him in his head, he's like, you know, I have to do everything because maybe I don't have the funds to pay somebody right now. Or maybe I need control of the business right now, right? So I said to him the same exact thing that I said to you. Yeah. And he finally, like, sat down and process. I'm like, I'm not having this kid or, you know, an, an intern or somebody that's working in the office for a couple hours replace you. All I'm doing is trying to take the little minute things that you spend, even if you spend an hour a day on these things. That's, big. that's five, six hours a week, mm-hmm. depending if you're working five or six days. Now, times that by the month, that's 30 hours a week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or well, 20 hours a week. Yeah, whatever it is. If it's five, but you know what I'm saying? And now yeah. that over a year is crazy. Yeah. And that's the, the compound effect. And he was like, wow, you know, you're right. And again, there's there's things, though, that I, and I believe, and I'm not tooting my own horn here, but I've, I've given 
real opportunities for people to either screw up themselves or put themselves in a really good position. Yeah. Right. Where I have taken chances on people. And this is where some people don't agree with me. I take a lot of chances on individuals because at the end of the day, and I think you've said this before, what really can go wrong? Right. Like, yes, things can go south. A deal can fall apart. Um, you know, a, a business event can flop. You could really screw something up, but there's nothing that I really can't come back in and have a conversation about and fix if somebody else screws it up, right? So I allow I I allow people, and sometimes it's big, heavy tasks. My man's getting itchy over there, I'm sure, because yeah, I because <laughs> I try to put people in position. You got to give people opportunities, right? Yeah. Like I was given an opportunity, um, you have been given an opportunity, you've been given an opportunity. So I want to do the same thing in people, even if they haven't shown you know, that they're the best for the job. Yeah, yeah. I give people opportunities. I try not to put it on people who I know suck. 100%. Right? But, yeah. like, you got to show some level of competence to get an opportunity. So, yeah, you're it's 100% right. 100% right. The thing that I like about the control of the scheduling, which I, this is just a thought. It doesn't contribute or discount anything you're saying. I just like knowing if someone calls me, I know how to move my schedule around yes. to keep my time with my kids. Or a nuance of like, oh, I know this client isn't as priority because they're just looking and they're not like that speed that I can operate with because it comes through me. Right. I am a bottleneck for sure. It'd be easier if I had someone managing my schedule. Not, of course. But be able to adjust on the fly constantly mm -hmm. is great because the client's like, hey, you know, if I have someone that needs to close in two weeks and like they're for real, for real, which I have a bunch of them and they call me, I'm bumping everyone else. I'm like, listen, can you please do 30 minutes later? Is that okay? Right. And I'm never going to put someone in an awkward position, but I'm going to be very, like, you know, prioritize on based on what I got to do. Of course. And being able to do that fast saves me so much time mm -hmm. because I know, like, yeah, these people, I know they only can see stuff after 4.30, so I got to keep that block open, and I'm waiting on that call. It's all happening at the same time. So when you have someone at the helm that knows everything, yes, it makes it so much easier. And you're right, the mar the mailers, I can get someone to do that. You no, know, and I had someone at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's definitely parts of the business that I I am getting the right help, but I'm being conscious of like the people that I'm bringing on. I want to be very efficient at it, right? If you know, what and I mean? then even new like I mean new leads and stuff like that. Yes, of course you want to be the one to do that, but there's no reason why you can't. And you have a great relationship with businesses in general. But even the non-food businesses, right? Like you can create, a, whether it's a digital thing or some sort of flyer and have this person put as their job five hours a week where they're putting one piece of paper in every single business on their you know, community sure. board. For sure. You just don't even know what the yeah. compound interest could be of that. It 100%. could be zero or it could be really good for you. So you know? that the limitlessness of what I can get someone to do with the extra time is right. like almost overwhelming to think about. Because right. I'm like, I would give them everything that I would do if I had the time to do. Um, and it's just, I'm very thoughtful on who I'm bringing on yes. because we're new. And I know, you know, a misstep could cost it. I could yeah. go out of business pretty easily at this stage. Mm -hmm. well, until you have a nice cushion, you got to be careful. But 100%, that's, that's something it'll grow into. I'm just trying to be conscious of keeping, I have to be better about the focus of what business I take on in this growing stage if I want to grow the way I want to grow. Right. I could bring on a ton of agents become this different thing that i that i don't want to build and grow way faster but i can't get frustrated if i'm not going to go that route right mm -hmm. if i'm being thoughtful of how i'm doing it i can't get mad at myself for the slower growth yes does that make sense yeah absolutely um but it's good it's all good problems like yes, it th is. there's no bad problems i'm dealing with that i'm like wow i really if, it's all like damn i have so much opportunity mm -hmm. i have to figure out which angle to really like lean into and yeah. try to contribute to so it's good. It's like sometimes I get frustrated with myself even venting about it because I'm like, this is a great problem. Six months ago, you're worried you're never going to sell a property right, again, right, right. right? Do you um do you find uh, how do you pose this question? So for me, I I find that I'm much more productive when I relate it to when I relate a tax to an outcome, and it it could be financially, like you know, if I end up getting this done, maybe it'll make more money. Cool, blah blah blah. But like I have little like inspirational things like maybe i'll get to the lake 45 minutes earlier if i can get oh, yeah. xyz done right do you do that in your head like do you find i i, I want to use the word purpose but like yeah. purpose sounds a little foo-foo in this scenario L lately but do you find like, i've been do you doing do it and then i get hit with another thing right after and i'm like because like, <laughs> you can't how do i put this 
so like was it sunday sunday i was like all right i'm gonna get all my stuff done i started at i want to say like 11 and then i was done at six i'm like all right i'm gonna get some, you know maybe have a pizza or something on the balcony or the uh hobart west and have a cigar nice cigar Come find I get home, new offers need to be put in. I need to prep offers, put offers in. I didn't get done till like 1030 and I didn't do anything. Yep. And that that almost is more discouraging versus I'm just going to get through the day and whatever happens, happens. Yep. If I put that carrot and then I can't have and that carrot, have I carrot. get more discouraged. Oh, then it makes you eat the whole carrot Like cake. if you said, all right, I'm going to have a, I'm <laughs> a, <laughs> Then you end up going from the carrot to the carrot cake. You got a yeah. lot of calories. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's hard because I do like to do that. Yep. But then when I'm not able to do it, it's discouraging. Mm -hmm. So like, all right, I'm going to go work at like in the yard a little bit, or I'm going to get my workout at the end of the day. Like I look forward to the workouts. Yep. And then when I can't do it, I feel worse. Yeah. So. I'm throwing curveballs at you. No, no, I get it. I mean, but again, it's the. It, Does it's, that ever happen? It, of course. It's and minimizing. Feel Yo, worse, right? Well, so honestly, no, listen, listen, th this just happened to me. Uh, so we have a grants coordinator for the town, and that grants coordinator has like specific deadlines, right? Yeah. And I was off work. I was sitting at the lake, and I strategically, it was a little bit earlier in the day for me. Like maybe it was probably like five o'clock. And. I strategically left my phone in the car, my work phone, <laughs> which and I was thinking about it, too, yeah. while I was like down at the lake. I'm smoking a cigar and you almost feel that guilt like, yeah. damn, like I know maybe something can come in. But technically, my direct team knows like I'm out of office right now. Right. Yeah. So she starts blowing my phone up yeah. really, really bad to the point that when I got back, I think it was 11 missed calls from the same person who's a pretty heavy person in the, in the town. Right. Yeah. And basically it came down that a grant that I had submitted uh, there was something that needed to be adjusted by like 11 o'clock that night. Yeah. And that was one of those things that like I had to then adjust. I had to like cut my little lake day short and yeah. I started getting into stress mode. But the reality is how many times is that going to happen? So even if it happens uh, two out day. of but if it happens Dave, two out of ten times every day, see, and I don't, I, I that's the difference. I can't, and I can't it's not bad. To that. It's different. You know? I, that's what I'm trying to say. It's yeah. every day that happens every day. Then there's never, if I take a nap, a nap, 30 minute nap. Mm -hmm. I wake up, eight missed calls. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like a Murphy's Law, certain times of year. It's not always. Right, right, of course. But like in the peak when I'm in it, every day. Right. So it's not, it's but not eight missed calls bad. of important things or eight missed calls. Yeah, can calls you filter them down calls? to two missed calls? Like, I mean, what? Yeah, uh, I mean, like, say, say it's one, but Does it's it a drop very, everything it, missed calls? No, it's like, it's not like the world ends, but as soon as I wake up, I gotta get back to it. You right. know, it's not, nothing's the end of the world. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, there is a level of always being on yes. that I've come to grips with by choosing this business that there's real no escape. It's when you're out with the kids at the park, mm -hmm. when I get home, I'm like, all right, what did I miss? Yep. And then what do I have to catch? Which is good because I'm at least able to focus while I'm at the park right. and get to the park knowing that I'm going to pick up what I've missed. And be stressed after. on my drive home from the park. So the 8 o'clock to 12 work time, I don't want to do it. But I'm like, in the reality, if you're building a business, you got to do, do it. You got to do it, right. And if that alleviates the next day so I can spend time with the kids in the morning and not be stressed and enjoy the time with them, right. then it's by all means. It's just the realization of like, this is what you got to do and then accepting it. Mm -hmm. This time around was difficult be because I had this, and this is being very honest, I had this like, I deserve to not have to do this because I've been doing it for so long that it took me time to accept it and be like, this is what you got to do. You're back at square one. You're building your own business. This is what you wanted. You got to do it. Right. Where I got into the mode of like, you don't have to do it anymore because you put in five years of this. Mm -hmm. And then when you go back, I get frustrated. I'm like, man, I thought it was over the the all-nighters. But then I realized like, wow, my name's on the business now. If anything, now is the time you have to put those hours yes, in. 100%. That was hard for me to go backwards. I have a Not question. even backwards, to readjust. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, are there days and times in your business that – are just going to be slow or nothing's going to happen yeah. for instance yeah probably like a friday night like are, are people like really trying to like knock down your door on a friday evening let me ask you this i, I don't know no, maybe, but maybe listen, it is i don't know ready you saw a property with me friday during the day mm -hmm. saturday they're having open house mm -hmm. and you're like mike what do you think and i'm like we should get offering mm -hmm. like before the open house and try to block the open house mm -hmm. so that becomes like all right well i'm having people over friday but is that every is that every Friday? That's every now and then. It's more often than not lately. And that's lately. Right. So this is peak time. So like we were going to Phil's to go in the pool with the kids, right? Important client of mine wanted to see a property and we had to see it. They had a deal on it and they were trying to get there. Friday night. 
Got you. Saturday night. Saturday night. Worse. Right? And it's the business. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to drop the kids off with Dana at Phil's. I'm going to go do this appointment. And then when I get back to Phil's, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Dropped them off. Drove a half an hour to backcountry, which is fine. Um, did the showing. The showing was an hour and 15 minutes because we had an accepted offer and we were value, evaluating if they wanted to go through with it, right? After that hour and 15 minutes or whatever, I drive 30 minutes back. It's about 8 o'clock, 8.15. The kids are like half awake. I didn't go in the pool with them, right? We're sitting there. I'm still in my work clothes on a Saturday evening. I have one vodka soda and I'm like sitting with the kids. Livy's crawling on me, this and that. 30 minutes later, we get in the car, we bring them home, right? So it, mentally, it's like, damn, like it, it's the stuff I got to do but it hurts more now. Mm -hmm. It's more of a sacrifice than when I didn't have kids. Yes. So that adjustment mentally, you got to do it, right? To some extent, like if this is the industry you want to be in, but it's more of a mental tax lately that I'm I'm figuring out how to manage. Yeah. Well, it's not good or bad. No, it's no, no. Just, it's very, I mean, that's a good But that's scenario. like the dynamic of it. I think you painted it. that picture very, very well. But it's, it's the reality. Like <clears throat> part of the reason I tell people this is like, I love it. If you don't love that this business- <laughs> But if you, but that's so my what point, you're saying right? is that your industry is a single person's journey. Well, where no. he is right now, if you, he's building this the business. way you're, well, the I way, mean, the way I'm building it, I have sacrificed certain things that a lot of people don't have to do right. to be able to do it the way I want to do so that in the future, there's going to be a different cadence to it. Right. If I do it correctly. So I'm not going to be doing that. But in the do future. you really think that's going to be the case? Yes. Yes. hundred percent. Because. because I don't know. I mean, not that I want to disagree with you. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I hope it, yeah. I guess, how you envision it, it happens. But it seems that so, you know, these are patterns. Like, you know, uh, history will repeat itself. If, yeah. you, if you have a yeah. tendency to always be up and looking for the next thing, that's not going to change. It's just going to be bigger and more and more and bigger and more. And there's no end to it. Yeah. If you said, you know, today, I want it to look like X, Y, and Z, and that was it. And that's what you're achieving. And you achieve it. And then you're done. Yeah. I would believe you. But I don't think that's you. Well, your, your your personality. So this phase is, is a growth phase, right? So if that scenario today, now, yeah, right now, and then you'll achieve a goal, and then at that point, because you, I'm not to say you lack focus, but you like to always look. Oh, you have so many, hundred percent. You have a million ideas all the time. Yeah, you're gonna get to that place where you know things are looking good, and it's gonna be like, what's the next thing? Or or with you, that's yeah. really more a Dave kind of thought process. Your thought pro no, it's not a bad one. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yours is yours is more like, you know, oh, look at that. Oh, let, let me let me let me go and, and put all my in energy into this. Kind so of. I don't think it's ever going to end. So 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 I think you need to become better at and you know, no disrespect here, no, you need no, to no. get better at managing this uncomfortable moments because I think with you they're going to just continue coming. Well, that that's why I've been in for the next, last 10 years. So every the the shore of ignorance grows as your your education grows like as i keep learning these new things but you're always going to be learning something new that's my point yeah but because when you learn what you what you're learning today you're going to be cool i learned this but the difference is like, oh look the let, let me learn the, this new thing the difference is in a year two years if that situation happens i will be in a financial right. position and the kids position where they're maybe not in daycare anymore and i have enough of a cushion money where i'm like listen I can't do this evening. We could do it tomorrow morning. Let me know if that works. Right. He, and then he, the conversation's said, done. He said that he didn't right? want to be the biggest firm, right? So I don't want to be the so biggest that's, firm. So that's where I think I disagree with you, C V. But he's, because he's making a good point, though. No, no, of course. Yeah. And you're a go-getter. So you're always, I see what he's saying. Maybe you're always going to, right, you're always going to want to do something different. But yeah. I think the sacrifices that he makes now having the kids is making him realize for the first time ever, right? Like, just as a parent in general, I can relate to that. Relate to that. Um because you have so much more to lose yeah. because you're missing out on a time frame, right? Yeah. Like him him not jumping in the pool with his daughters, like that probably was like, ah, damn. So you, he's going to make the sacrifice necessary in the future. Right now, it may not be the you know financially smart move to do. And you're afraid to lose. Like in the past, I wouldn't, you know, it's a contradiction because I'm afraid that I don't want to miss too much time with them at this phase that I'm not going to get back. But I also don't want to put them in a position where we're, in a financial hole. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's that like, yeah, listen, what you're, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. And everyone deals all, with all this. All I'm saying is your personality is going to ultimately prevent you yeah. from. Yeah. Because it, yeah. it's, it's, you're just yeah. being, you try, you're, you're talking about being complacent. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're, you don't have that in your mindset. Yeah. So yeah, right now you're doing what you're doing. It's a little bit of a burden. Yeah. Um, and that's why I say you're probably better off trying to learn how to manage these, this, this crazy. Yeah. Because I think this crazy is always going to be around. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just now it's this. 
Well, and maybe 10 years when your kids are maybe not requiring you to be there as much. Yeah. Because they'll be more independent. They'll be kind of more self-sufficient. Yeah. They'll also go through the phase. I don't want daddy coming to everything that I do. Yeah. And you're going to be like, oh, wow, I'll have all this extra time. Yeah, yeah, let for me, sure. Let me, oh, look at that idea. Let me another yeah. sausage party. Mm-hmm. Oh, the beef patty joint. <laughs> so that's like why it's – so what I'm doing, and it's hard, I'm trying to change my personality. Like – I'm trying to be someone. But you don't have to. That's. I mean, I think you have a great personality. I just think you just have, you embrace it, which is great. Yeah. I just think you need to get better at the, I at need the to find crazy, a so that when the crazy is coming to you, you're not feeling so overwhelmed that it's like f everything. I yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Because I get to that point. But the um, the reason I'm leaning into the stoicism stuff, because their whole concept is like there's nothing wrong with achieving, and going for more and trying to achieve more. But you and I'm not unhappy with what I have, but I'm more worried about not fulfilling what i think i can do does that make sense mm-hmm. like it's not okay. so much i'm unhappy yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm not unhappy what we've accomplished my family my my property all that stuff like our house i i love it i have a, a time enjoying it but i have this un unbelievable itch all the time of needing to do more mm. and i need to figure out how to hone that in and like do more but not at the cost of my sanity does right. that make sense yes absolutely and you do you deal with that because mm-hmm. you're very like yeah how do you how do you curb that to get the like what's the minimum dose? That's what I'm trying to figure. What's but the so minimum I, dose but that's of internal, progress? But no, no, that's no, internal, I'm, isn't it? I'm yeah, very that's what I'm trying, trying to figure it's out. It's not going to stop. No, that's the question though. Like, what's yeah. the minimum? Well, dose? But again, so I have I have very specific goals that I just I, I latch so onto specificness, but I, I latch onto on. right. So specifically for work, S- smart right for work. It's me being at the top of my industry. Yeah. So right now I'm the deputy commissioner. Yeah. Everything that I do and I put my hands on now is the goal to become the commissioner. Yeah. Then once that gets accomplished, right, say now in my personal world of real estate, I've put myself in a financial situation to where when that building becomes available, I'm buying it. Yeah. Right. So I'm making the progress towards the goal, but I'm okay with the moments of uh, stagnant-ism. <laughs> Stagnantism? <laughs> you get what let's I'm saying? Let's go with it. So <laughs> let's go with it. Uh, so I'm latched on to those two, and those are just two, you know, random ones that are kind of on the top of my head. Um, where I don't like putting my my hands in specific things because of the chaos that comes along with it, right? So I had to take the necessary steps to put myself in these positions. So now I'm the deputy commissioner, right? So there's going to be a timeline before I'm commissioner, yeah. And then I've also created the financial leverage to get me to that next property. Yep. So it's just a matter of time, but as long as I'm taking the actions necessary, it's going to happen. Yeah, you know, and that's just my that's my personal 100%. mindset on it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Is, I think it's very thoughtful, specific, which I think is your that why it works because it's specific. You know, smart, it's smart, very goals. smart goals, smart goals. Yeah, I guess I, I need to work because I think too broadly on everything. So everything I do you're the contributes to. Well, I'm <laughs> trying to be multitask. better about not multitasking. No, but, but your brain, like you like you you like that. And you thrive in that. Yeah, I don't know if I like it anymore. <laughs> well, well, that's, that's that, what I'm that saying. Could like, be different, I honestly right? think that you really, if you can hone in on some skills that can help that, yeah. Yeah. I think you'll be fine. I think if you can get in some um, delegation type of skill set. some For sure. And I, even your, your thought process so very much, and trust me, I relate because yeah. a lot of what you say in the control, that's how I operate. And I don't have the issue of like not having a staff we can pay to do some of the little things. I actually do. Yeah. And even then, I still have some control, control issues mm-hmm. just because my branding is important to me. I yep. want to make sure that the product we put out is good. 100%. But um, that is the skill set. And I'm not telling you that I'm a pro. Maybe you can talk to this no, guy. I got to work on it. You're right. <laughs> we but, all um, have to work how, on it, though. How, do you, how can Always. you maximize your efficiency? Yeah. Because you're going to be this person forever. And you're That's already not killing changing. it, too, right? Like, you, you look at where you're at, dude. You, you're already doing so much, but you don't see that. Because, I don't see it. You know what I mean? The, the, but the progress yeah. alone and how specific you already are about the, you know, the week that you had last week, that's dope shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's not that's not normal for... And for all you would now. do, honestly, with somebody that helps you or somebody that whatever, all it would do is bring down your stress level a little bit. Yeah. You're still accomplishing the all the things that you're not doing. No, not in the beginning, because yeah. it's well, going to take more effort to yes, try... And yes. funny you're saying this, because... You should be doing the same exact thing where you're you're trusting somebody a little bit more in your business to take on some task that you've mastered. Yeah. But like even to my dad's point, he's like, yo, the amount of time it's going to take me to train somebody to do it the way that I'm going to. No, but I hear you. But yeah. over the long haul, it's worth it's it. It's worth it when you find the right person. But and you might not find right. the right person right away. But that's the whole point. And well, for him, again, yeah. choose so there's your, a one part that you have a little easier. Choose right? your chaos. Um, 
if you find somebody that works with you and you, yes, you spend time in the beginning and you effort and time and blah, blah, blah. When you find somebody good, you can be set. One of my issues is that sometimes you find, find good, good people, but One then they want growth. Yeah, yeah. And when they want growth, they eventually move on and they go somewhere else. Yeah. And but that's, that's okay. where, huh? That's no, okay. It, it is okay. But then it's like back to the square, square one. one. Right. Yeah. Whereas if you used to have somebody in a private place that you're you're hopefully going to let them grow within you. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have a great, I'm super fortunate. We have a really good team and it's small, but like everyone's very efficient. And, mm. you know, we. it's just the volume. And I've said it in nauseam and I'm not, I'm not complaining. The the issue is the volume always is like every time I hit a new level, it's new. And then it's like, fuck, revert mm -hmm. back to your just yep. get stuff done. Pull all nighters, this and that. Well, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, 100%. It could it's be the not, opposite. <laughs> I know. It's good. It's all good. And I'm like, damn, this is good stuff. And I'm like, how am I going to get it all done? Mm -hmm. That's the constant thought I have in my head. Right. How am I going to get it all done? And it's all clients. It's not even of like, course. I don't, if sometimes I'm like, I don't really want to market. I can't handle any more clients. Right. right. It's like a um, contractor. You know how contractors are always in the state of too busy and, mm -hmm. you know, too many clients and not enough help. And that's the constant state I get into during the peak season. Yep. And then it scales back. I get to that next level and I'm like, all right. But the, the constant growth is so draining. Right. Because you're but like, also I could have, if I had the same business last year, Easy peasy, right? Mm -hmm. And then this year it's double, and I'm like, fuck, like it's gonna be a grind just to get all, you know? Yep. It's good. It's all. But when good. you when you look at growth, and this this will serve as uh, Dave's dime of the week. This little this little dimes, story. dimes, dimes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this little story will serve as uh, Dave's dime of the week. So there was this, um, and and the point is like you know just doing doing a little bit more, but to the point where you're not really overwhelming yourself on a daily basis. So there was this middle-aged gentleman, and he was a little overweight, right? And Sounds familiar. From, <laughs> Hopefully you're talking about me. <laughs> from, <laughs> from one year to the next year, like, he had this goal of, you know what? I want to walk a mile every day, right? So in one year, he ends up walking a mile every single day. Why are you laughing? It's sounding a little familiar, but okay. Oh, oh no, no, it's not you. Um, <laughs> so... He ends up walking this mile every single day for 365 days, which was an awesome goal, right? And then something clicked in his head, and he said, well, you know what? I just want to do a little bit more because the weight wasn't coming off anymore. He, like, still was in his old habits. So he applied this little bit more tactic to where on day one, he walked a mile. On day two, he walked 1.1 miles. On like day three, he walked 1.2 miles. Day four, so on, so on. By the end of the year, just adding 0.1, so whether this is in running, in business, or anything, this man, by the end of the year, was running and walking 40 miles a day Insane. on day 365. Does he not have that a job? A What's he doing? Yeah. No, no, no. But, <laughs> he got a lot of free time, <laughs> the, my man. But you get what I'm saying? So the, the compound effect... Of just adding, what did that guy's bank account look like? <laughs> right. It was, was Forrest poor Gump. Right? It was Forrest Gump. Yeah. All right, he ran across. <laughs> he ran movie reference. Let's oh, go. Man. Let's go. Um, and the the whole point in that watch, is, right? you know, something that you think you can do something for a year. You could do something for five years, right? I could work out every single day, but at the end of the day, if you want to scale and you want to get to that next level, there is something to be said about finding the littlest increase in whatever it is that you do because that same mile on day one turned into 40 miles on day 365. I like the concept of I don't think it's realistic. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It doesn't yeah. have to be 365 it's, days, yeah. but in your business, you know, you having this one kid or whoever it is, you know, make two phone calls. Then on day three, he's making three phone calls. By that time four, it happens, I'm out of business. If it's going that slow. <laughs> you're not making the phone calls. You're not making the phone if calls. If he's doing that, not doing I'm not getting any business, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, There's a level of uh, output you need to put just yes, to get by, just to, and that's not going to do that's it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. What, all, everything you're saying is correct. Sometimes <laughs> I'm like, in reality, though, once I get to mile five, I'm out of time. I'm out of, I'm, I'm out of business. Out of so gives a Until shit. next year, you're like, oh, let's go back to the episode where yep. we said it. This and big it, guy is right. Remember that? <laughs> um, if I make it. Yeah, uh, all right, guys. We'll wrap up here because we've been we've been rambling. Wait, wait. I have a question. What? None related to the topic. What? Can we talk a little basketball? 
Oh no! Yeah, no I've been watching. Is it game tonight? Oof. No, just a time? quick one. Are we thinking? Like, what are we thinking? I've I've enjoyed watching the playoffs. I think um, I'm shocked they they snuck one. I mean, uh, me too. Heat. I thought it was gonna be a sweep. You thought it was gonna be a sweep? They're low. Yeah. How does Denver get that many good players? De- but Denver's. <sighs> if the Knicks I mean, made the they championship, they, just, they, just they lose by. They if really the Knicks are made the tough. championship, yeah. they lose. They lose by sixty. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Joke, yo, whatever the hell his yeah. name is, have eighty. It's him Itch. alone. Is, he's, it, yo, he's ridiculous, right? He's he really so is. Good. He's the guy. ugly sometimes. <laughs> sometimes he's ugly. so ugly. I, that's why I love it. It kind of reminds me of Mike Yeah, yeah. He just throws it in there. But how good is? Uh, who's the shooting guard? What's his name? Murray. Murray. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. He's Un- a beast. That's how it's working because yes. he compliments whatever he deals oh, with. Right, right. So good. But the other dude is doing. So who do you got? Like who that. do you got? I know Denver. Yeah. So sure. I have to say, I just want to know. You know, I, so I'm making little side bets with people. So yeah. oh, at first I was bet. no, no, no. You no, thought no. they were sweeping? Yeah. yeah. And then I gave one game. I think so I'm at one game right now. I think they get one more. For real? One more. Am I lose my bet? Get one more. I don't know. Put it in sure. the books. Uh, who knows? Oof, I've been enjoying watching. Put it in the books. I like watching games or like late, like when the Lakers were playing, just so that while I'm working, I don't feel yes. I can. You like, don't feel like you're, you're distracted. Alone. You Listen. going Denver? Or you going Heat? Um, I'm gonna say the Heat are gonna win. Stop Butler's it. gonna <laughs> Put money listen, on listen, that. ready? Put money on I'm that. gonna tell you, Butler's gonna go off. The, the Buckets, Miami, nice. the Miami threes. They've been on a drought for a while, and they had a little little spurt. In the last game, they did. I think, yeah. What's his name? Hit like four threes in the first quarter. Though, yeah, yeah. I think um, they they get hot and win. They get nah, hot. And then wow. Jimmy Butler, Put four sausages on. That. Then Jimmy <laughs> Butler, <laughs> Jimmy Butler's in the conversation of like one of the best, like ever. He absolutely. like watch Jimmy buckets. Yeah. Is nice. How many did he have he the second game? How many points? Uh, I forget the. Uh, it was almost. I think he's getting comfortable. Well, it wasn't even so much that what he got because like, everybody he else contributed. But, but His I, numbers were ridiculous. I think but now no, that, he did. Now he that, still at thirty. I think now that they they showed that Denver they could beat Denver and they actually gave him like a, yeah. some good business in that game. I think they go on and win, mm, which is not a, so. a common. Take. Four I think put it on the map. I think one is all they're getting. Yeah, I don't think oh, that. it's in Miami one? tonight. Though. I'm saying one more. Yeah, one. Yeah, I think they're winning tonight. Tonight they are. Who Miami? Right. Yeah, no way. Miami's gonna be no way. It's gonna be they rocking. Are. And B- Butler, if he comes out yep. hot, it is gonna that be. place is gonna be. Loud. I might go for the. I'm baby I'm hook. I, I'm going. going to Miami? Let's go. I go to Miami. Let's down. go. What would take it? That'd be pretty cool. That'd be awesome. Um, all right, guys. So listen, as always, whether you listen to one or 152, we thank you guys. Very grateful for you. Share the uh, the podcast. Um, and Michael, let them know where to shop, please. Nosnewshop.com. Focus, right, guys? I you were going to say nosnewsausage.com. <laughs> <laughs> so, until next time, stop snoozing. And focus on some shit. Instead of selling Sunset, selling Sausage is fire. Oh, my God. Amazing. <laughs> Did I pitch Netflix? <laughs> That's fire. We pitch Netflix. You're right. That's another Epi in the books. Go follow us on Instagram and Facebook at No Snooze Podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, No Snooze.